All right, so this week I've got a fun little exercise in getting creative with 3D and Photoshop CS5 Extended, and that we're gonna be creating some interesting abstract elements. And this, the, the real point here is to kind of really kind of get you thinking differently about what's capable inside Photoshop as far as 3D goes. So what we're gonna do is actually create a very interesting abstract 3D element. And the great thing about it being in 3D is that once it's created, you can just manipulate its position and get an entirely different look altogether without having to go through recreating it from the, from the beginning. So we will begin inside of our document here and I've gone ahead and created a background color element here. It's just a simple yellow to orange gradient, radial gradient here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new blank layer. And inside this document, the first thing I need to do is actually establish the middle area, the exact middle of this document. So I'm gonna bring up my rulers, just press Command or Control R. We're gonna drag out a guide, vertical and horizontal. We'll start with the, uh, the vertical one. Just click inside the ruler, drag out a guide, and then when you get to the center of your document, it should snap right to it. See, there it is, just goes, boom, snaps right there. We'll do the same thing with a horizontal guide, drag it down, snaps there, and there is the center of our document. So with that in place, we're gonna go into our toolbar and go into the shape tools here and go down here and choose the ellipse shape tool. Up here in the options bar, we're gonna make sure that we have it set to draw a regular path right here. We don't wanna do a shape layer, but rather a regular path. And we want it to be an elliptical shape and adding to our layer. So inside the document, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down my shift key and then drag out a perfect circle at the close to the top of the document here. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and take this and just position it in the center. Again, it will snap right to the edge to that guide. And this uh, circle does seem a little big, so I am going to go ahead and scale it down just a hair. Zoom in here. So I'm just going to scale that down just a little bit more, not too much. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what I want to do is actually do a step and repeat and kind of have these going around the document, kind of like a ring of rings, if you will. So with that shape still selected, I'm gonna invoke the step and repeat by pressing Option Command T, uh, which would be Alt Control T on Windows. And there we have it. Now, I want this to actually repeat around the center of the document, not around the center of the shape. So we're gonna take that center target and just take it and drag it down to the middle of the document. And then we'll go ahead and take this and I'm gonna uh, hold down the Shift key and then drag this thing over. I'm gonna do one, two, three times. So it's basically in the center between this part and this horizontal area over here. So press enter, and then now all I need to do is hold down Shift Option Command, it will be Shift Alt Control on Windows, and then press the letter T until it goes all the way around the document. And there we have our ring of rings. So now, again, we are on this blank layer, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and give that a color fill. Let's go ahead and open up our swatches and just uh, give that a blue color fill just so you can see what's going on. And with that, I'm gonna take and select all those shapes. Just use your path selection tool, select all the shapes there. And again, we are on that uh, blue fill, uh, filled layer. Go to 3D, Repousse, Selected Path. And it's going to go ahead and apply the extrusion to those shapes. And as you can see, we're, it's almost as if we're looking down at them and they're extruding away. But here's where we're gonna have a little bit of fun with it. Go into the extrude setting here and take the depth and push it all the way as far as it'll go, all the way to 10. And you can see how those got a little bit longer. Well, you can add more interest by going in here and, and to the twist setting and we'll go ahead and set this to 300 and notice what's happened there. We're getting an interesting kind of spiraling effect happening here. Well, the lines themselves are a little jagged. You can see they're not very straight or smooth, and that's because of the setting right here, which is in the scene settings. We'll just go to mesh quality and click best. And it should smooth those lines out, and we'll get nice, smooth, spiraling lines here. There we go. So it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in this position that it's at, and we've got the settings in place. Everything looks great. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now, you'll notice the blue color we applied is only showing up in the face of these um, objects, or on the ends, rather, of these spiraling um, shapes. Well, if we wanted to go ahead and make it that blue color, we could go here into the Layers panel and just go into the Layer 1 Extrusion material right here. It's the sub-layer attached to the 3D layer. Simply double-click on that, and it comes up and is an empty document. Simply 
input that blue color fill, close the document, save the changes, and the rings are nicely updated. Or well, the spiral is now taken on that blue color. Now, go in your toolbar and into the 3D tools, grab the 3D object slide tool, and then click and drag down, and it will bring the object forward. And we'll put the ends of those rings just out of, out of view. And there we have the spiral. Now, I do want to make it a little bit bigger, so here's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and open up the 3D panel. And what I, actually, I want to elongate it, so it's pretty long as it is. In fact, if we go ahead and just zoom out here and just use our rotate tool, so you can see what we've done, all we have is merely a spiraling shape. So even looking at it from out here, it could be an interesting abstract shape. So, but let's go back a couple of steps, back to where we're looking down the view there. There we go. And we'll go in here into the tool set, or rather inside the 3D panel here. And down here where the tools are, we're going to grab the 3D mesh scale tool. Well, it's just out of view there. And I'm just going to hold down the shift key and drag up and what that's going to do, you can see it's getting longer, but the illusion of it getting longer is giving us this kind of cool spiraling effect. So there we have that. Isn't that cool? So now I can almost be done at this point with this shape. But this is what I was talking about earlier, about 3D objects and being able to manipulate just merely their position and you get a different effect altogether. If I go in here and grab that 3D object rotate tool and just move this object around, look at the effect we're getting. We're getting a completely different result. You can even go outside of it and just reposition this to get a very interesting background element look. Isn't that cool? And not only that, you can also do this. It's, um, it's looking cool, we can reposition it and the colors look good, but if you just wanted to keep it maybe mostly monochromatic, where you, you wanted it to be more of a background element, go back into that extrusion material file right here that we filled with blue, just fill it with gray. So it will be neutral, but yet pick up all the lighting that's going on, and then merely change the blend mode of that layer. So we'll go into that layer and go in here and make the, uh, the blend mode into overlay. And look at that. We're getting, it's blending with that background color, and yet we still have a 3D element that we can maneuver and change its position to get a different effect all together. How cool is that? We can change, uh, we can go to vivid light, maybe hard light will show up more. Not nearly as much. Again, this is a, it's an experiment, an experimental thing. When you get to this point, this is where you start having fun, just manipulating its positioning and changing colors and getting very interesting results with 3D right there inside Photoshop.